for our two minutes of science today, we're going to look at what is inside a curling iron. As you can remember, not too long ago, we looked at a curling iron to see how quickly it would heat up, and it took quite a little while. Well, now when we look inside that curling iron, we're going to be able to see what affects how quickly the curling iron will heat. First of all, when we look at this curling iron, it's fairly strong, the springs are good, the wires that hold it together are robust, so that it's not a totally inexpensive curling iron, but uh, we'll get a look inside to see exactly what trade-offs they met in building it. Generally there's just a couple of screws to get most of the pieces off, and the clips to hold pieces on are spring-loaded. You can see here that the power connector, they've made it so that it can be plugged in or out. That's a nice touch so that it's easy to replace that particular part if it goes bad. The rest of it, there's no rheostat or uh, potentiometer or anything like that that you can adjust the heat. There's only a switch that goes back and forth on two levels. Without any kind of temperature control, the curling iron heating is based on a trade-off. That is, the power that they put to it, 9 or on high 18 watts, is balanced against how quickly the heat is radiated to the outside air so that it never increases to some too high a heat to be used as a curling iron. That's why the curling iron body is really heavy, so it can be acted as a heat sink to keep the temperature regulated in that way. It's all based on design, not based on control. 